Hello class, today we are going to practice solving energy balances for bioprocesses and I will divide this lecture into two parts. So, for the first part, pag-aaralan natin kung paano mag-solve ng energy balances for anaerobic process muna kasi magkaiba yung approach kapag anaerobic versus kapag aerobic yung ating bioprocess. And in this example, ang i-consider natin ay isang process na very much familiar sa ating lahat which is ethanol fermentation. And this process is basically a continuous process kung saan mayroon kang charge na glucose sa fermenter. The fermenter operates at 30 degrees Celsius and we are using Saccharomyces cerevisiae or yeast cells here in this system. So you will charge the fermenter with glucose at 36 kg per hour and ammonia yung kanyang nitrogen source at 0.4 kg per hour. So in here, na-solve na natin yung material balances. So you're already given with the amount of cells coming out of the reactor, which is yung yeast cells nga natin. Uh, glycerol and ethanol are the two products of this process. And of course, you will have your water. So, makikita nyo sa flowchart, wala dyang charge na air kasi anaerobic yung ating process. So, ganun ang pagsusolve ng energy balances. You cannot do it unless masolve mo muna si material balances. And in this example, nakalagay na lahat ng ating streams or flow rates. I forgot to include also na meron kang 13.6 kg per hour na carbon dioxide bilang isang off gas or off stream natin. In of course in your problem sets or exams, you will expect na you will do both mass balances and energy balances. But for this example, itutuloy na natin agad kasi na solve na yung bawat stream and composition nila. Okay, so we have here the some useful data. Ano yung mga yun? So, you have heats of combustion or technically enthalpies of combustion nina, glucose, ammonia, glycerol, and ethanol. So, saan sila makakuha? Uh, binigay ko na sila dito sa ating video but you have to obtain them from your tables. Okay? And I also included here yung kanilang molecular weights. Glucose, ammonia, glycerol, and ethanol. Also, usually yung heat of combustion ng cells natin, depende siya of course dun sa klase ng organism. So we have a table actually for uh, various heats of combustion for different organisms. But uh, if you don't have the data or information, or for example sa table, wala kayo makita dun na given na organism nyo. Let's say, in this case, sa karamay sa service, wala siya sa table. So, ang value na pwede natin gamitin is ito. Okay? So, generally, ang, ang isang general na yeast cells, ito yung kanyang enthalpy of combustion. So, minus 21.2 kilojoule per gram. So, you might wanna kind of memorize this value already. So, ang hinahanap sa problem na to is, we have to estimate the cooling requirements. Ibig sabihin, gano kalaking power okay, in terms of kilojoules or maybe kilowatts later on we'll see kung ano yung masasolve natin uh, para ma-cool down natin itong fermenter so if you have a fermentation process kasi so they will evolve heat pangkaraniwan nag-evolve sila or nagbibigay sila they give off heat Okay, so in other words, we, ha we have to find out kung ano yung value or ano yung amount ng energy na yun na gini-give off nung, nung process para maalaman natin or ma-equate natin kung gaano kadami yung cooling requirements. Okay, so how do we start to solve this one? So first, we have to consider what are the assumptions in this problem. So, gawin natin, let's assume na ang ating process ay steady state. Tama ba? So, kapag steady state yung process natin, here I give you the working equation that we have solved last time. So, ito siya. Okay. Um, 
Basically, nandiyan yung mga energy terms like enthalpy, kinetic energy, potential energy, multiplied by the amount of material. Kasi ang nakalagay dyan na terms or uh, form ng energy ay naka-indicate na specific. Ibig sabihin, meron kang specific enthalpy, specific kinetic energy, for example. Ibig sabihin, naka per kilogram sila or naka per gram or naka per mole. So, you have to multiply by the amount para makuha mo yung absolute energy. Alright? Uh, if we are going to assume a steady condition, in other words, walang accumulation ng property, whatever that property is. So, there will be no build-up also of energy. And therefore, you have to cancel uh, the delta E term. Okay? So, steady state. Now, normally for bioprocesses, wala rin namang kinetic energy or potential energy. You don't uh, expect changes in elevation and you also won't expect much flow rate or flow in your system. So, pwede natin siguro in-neglect yung kinetic energy and potential energy. Okay? Uh, what else can we do to simplify our general working equation? So, ang natira, therefore, dito sa ating reduced energy balance equation is enthalpy na lang. And he, of course, yung heat or yung Q na tinatawag, tsaka yung shaft work. So, mamaya, baka makita natin wala palang shaft work dun sa process. But, uh, going back to my point sa enthalpy, if you are going to multiply specific enthalpy with the amount, let's say yung specific enthalpy mo ay naka per kilogram and yung amount mo ay kilogram, so you will be able to get the absolute enthalpy. And let's try to symbolize that as uh, delta H na lang, so big letter H. So, that will become uh, delta H reaction. Okay, so delta H of the reaction. And yun lang naman talaga yung hinahanap natin dito sa problem. You have a reaction. Basically, a bioprocess like a fermentation process is a reaction. So, once we determine that enthalpy of reaction malalaman na natin yung heating requirements. Plus, of course, we have to account for the other energy terms. So, yan yun. Yung multiplication or yung, yung uh, pag minultiply mo yung specific enthalpy tsaka yung amount uh, for the reaction, for, for, for the materials participating in the reaction, so you will get the enthalpy of reaction. Okay? Yan na yung ano, uh, input minus output na siya. So, pinagsama na tong terms na to. Okay? That and that yan na yung enthalpy of reaction natin. Negative, right? Okay. And then, ang hindi ko in-include sa enthalpy dyan is yung, remember, enthalpy could have many different forms, right? So, aside from the enthalpy of reaction, we could also have enthalpy of mixing, enthalpy of solution. Uh, we also have sensible enthalpy, which is enthalpy due to changes in temperature. We also have latent enthalpy. Ibig sabihin, enthalpy siya because of phase change. So, hindi na natin ilalagay yung mga yon. But there is a specific uh, enthalpy na pwede mong i-expect sa mga bioprocess. And yun yung enthalpy of vaporization. So, basically, enthalpy of vaporization ay the same as, it's one of the forms of latent enthalpy. So, ilalagay mo yun. We have to account for that. Kasi, in some bioprocesses nga na matubig-tubig, so marami siyang water, right? Uh, may, minsan, mayroong uh, significance yung uh, evaporation. Ibig sabihin, kailangan natin i-account yung energy changes doon. So, therefore, you have to uh, separate that. Okay? So, minus whatever the amount of vapor uh, given off by the bioprocess times yung enthalpy of vaporization. Okay? And then, of course, we have minus Q plus yung shaft work. And then, na-zero natin yung accumulation na energy. So, zero na yan. But, uh, I didn't mention anything about some mechanical force in the process. So, assume natin na wala rin shaft work. Okay? So, cancel natin yung W sub S. Okay? So, yan na lang yung natitira. Okay? So, no shaft work. Ano pa? Um, in my set 
acting out of the problem, I also did not, uh, if you are going to take a look at the flowchart, so wala naman naka-indicate na evaporation ni water. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, perhaps we can neglect that term. No evaporation. So, ito siya. So, maybe, dun sa ibang example natin, we can probably account for the evaporation term. So, ang natira na lang therefore sa ating equation ay yung mismong enthalpy ng reaction. Okay? Tsaka yung heat. Alright? Now, remember, uh, in this problem, hinaharap natin dito is the cooling requirement. So, if you can determine the heat evolved by the process, malalaman mo kung gaano kadaming energy ang kailangan for cooling. So, basically, that's Q. So, arranging this equation, so magiging Q equals the enthalpy of reaction. Ibig sabihin, once we know already yung ating enthalpy of reaction, yun na rin yung heat evolved and yun na rin yung cooling requirements. Okay? So, that is now our very reduced working equation. Now, I forgot to include the basis. So, ano yung magiging basis natin sa ating problem? So, our basis, probably a good basis will be one hour of operation kasi naka, na, na given naman yung, yung mga flow rates. Naka per hour sila, naka kilogram per hour sila for both the stream sa product tsaka sa reactant. Okay? So, that will be the basis that we're going to use in this problem. Now, how do we start? So, perhaps we can write first the overall or the general scheme or the, the bioprocess reaction. So, ano yung itsura niya? Kung, kung sinusulat natin siya as a chemical reaction. So, basically, we have glucose. Okay? And then, yung kanyang nitrogen source na ammonia. Since anaerobic nga ito, ibig sabihin wala tayong oxygen na pinapasok. Okay? So, forming ano agad, biomass. Ito yung Saccharomyces cerebrisiae cells. Uh, and then, the products daw, according to the flowchart, is yung glycerol. Okay? Tsaka ethanol. And of course, again, meron kang water. Alright? At meron ka pang CO2 pala. Now, let's use the letter G for glucose para masimplify lang yung ating pagsusulat. Um, for ammonia, siguro A na lang. And then, sa cells natin, which is biomass, so B. Okay? Glycerol, gawin natin GLY. Ethanol, gawin natin siyang E na lang. Okay? Si water, W. Si carbon dioxide, C na lang. Okay, para mas masimplify natin yung ating pagsusulat. So, we have now the working equation already. But exactly how do we determine the enthalpy of reaction? Okay, so all we have to find is this enthalpy of reaction. So, paano yan? Uh, we discussed in the previous lecture that uh, if you have a bioprocess, okay, di ba, in general chemistry or some other textbooks that you have, uh, some other subjects that you have taken up, so basically, product minus reactant lang naman siya. But uh, since we are following the sign convention that we discussed last time, so gawin natin ganito, um, delta H reaction or enthalpy, Okay, is uh, whatever the amount of your glucose, okay, times the heat of combustion of glucose. So, this one is for glucose. So, pagsasamayin natin yung glucose tsaka si ammonia kasi sila yung pra, uh, reactant. Okay, so, plus the amount of ammonia times its heat of combustion. So, for ammonia. Okay, so... That is yung ating reactant. So, yung product naman, minus naman. Okay, so, M times the heat of combustion 
of ano ba yung product dito? Biomass. Okay? Minus M times the heat of combustion this time of your glycerol. Minus M times the heat of combustion of ethanol naman. Alright? Now, si carbon dioxide tsaka si water. So, ang kanilang heat of combustion will be zero. So, if you go to your tables or literature, so, yung kanilang heat of combustion ay zero. Okay? If you notice, yung ating given na uh, heats of combustion, aside from aside from the yeast, yung glucose, ammonia, glycerol, and ethanol, naka per mole yung kanilang heat or enthalpy of combustion. So, what if we convert agad-agad sa kilogram? So, let's do that. Uh, pwede rin namang hindi, basta consistent ka lang sa iyong dimensional analysis. But uh, what I'll do here is to convert it to per mass basis or per kilogram basis. Okay? So, umpisa natin sa glucose, no? So, to find the heat of combustion of glucose, okay, meron na tayo niyan but we just have to convert. So, according to our list kanina, 2805 negative, di ba? Kilojoule per mole. How do we convert this to kilojoule per kilogram? Eh di, gamitin natin yung molecular weight na 18. Okay? And then, yung ating conversion naman from gram to kilogram. So, we know that 1,000 gram ay 1 kilogram. Okay? So, you will get here... Uh, negative 1.558 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per kilogram. And let's do it for the rest of the substances. So, isurod natin yung ammonia. Alright. Minus 382.6 kilojoule per gram mole yung kanyang uh, combustion, heat of combustion. Hindi ko nilalagay yung units for the succeeding substances, right? So, yan, 17 yung kanyang molecular weight. And then yung conversion from gram to, kilo, to kilogram times mo lang sa 1,000. So, ang sagot dyan is negative 2.251 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per kilogram. Next is yung ating biomass or cells. So, we have that as well. Okay? But, ang given is uh, minus 21.2 kilojoule per gram. So, naka-mass basis na lang siya. Right? So, ang gagawin mo natin is just have to multiply by 1,000. Next, let's have glycerol. So, ang given na uh, combustion enthalpy niya ay minus 1655.4 and then converting it using the molecular weight, 92 yung kanyang molecular weight and then 1000. So, that will become negative 1.799 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per kilogram. And finally, let's have ethanol. Sa si ethanol, ang kanyang heat of combustion na given ay minus 1366.8. Okay? Multiply natin nung conversion factor involving the molecular weight and then conversion from gram to kilogram, it will give you minus 2.971 times 10 raised to 4 
times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. So, ayan. Na, kuha na natin lahat ng enthalpy in terms of kilojoule per kilogram. So, therefore, just following the equation here, so ito siya, isubstitute nyo lahat yan dito sa equation na to. Okay? Okay. So, delta H reaction equals mass of glucose. So, gano'ng kadami yung mass ni glucose? Diba? From our flow chart, ayun o, no, 36 kilogram per hour. So, 36 kilogram per hour multiplied by the enthalpy of combustion of glucose which we obtain here as minus 1.558 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per kilogram. Okay? Ganun din ang gawin natin sa the rest of the species. So, sumunod dyan is yung ammonia. So, according to the flow chart, 0.4 kilogram per hour. Multiply natin doon sa kanyang enthalpy. Okay. Next is yung biomass. And this time, minus na siya. Okay? Following our working equation here, di ba? Minus biomass. Okay? So, minus. Ano yung amount ni biomass according to the, to the flow chart? 2.81 kilogram per hour. Okay. Enthalpy minus 2.120 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per kilogram. Next, minus ang susunod dyan is glycerol which is 7.94 kilogram per hour. Okay. And then, ang kanyang Enthalpy ay 1.799. And lastly, ethanol. So, minus. Ang amount ni ethanol is 11.9 kilogram per hour. Multiplied by the enthalpy, minus 2.971 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per kilogram. Alright, so kompleto na yung ating given. Ibig sabihin na substitute natin sa equation. But uh, before we compute this, take a look at the units. So ang nilagay ko kasi dito is naka per hour siya. So nagbasis tayo ng 1 hour. So I didn't really have to include per hour. So pwedeng kilogram na lang. So just to be consistent sana. Anyway, nandiyan na yan. Uh, tingnan na lang natin. So for each term here in this equation, makakansin natin si kilogram, right? So, ang matitara is kilojoule per hour. So, ang sagot is kilojoule per hour. Okay? So, therefore, if you're going to compute this, the final answer will be negative 1.392 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per hour. That is our delta H reaction. Although, naka per hour siya. So, normally, we don't use per hour kapag tinutukoy natin yung mga energy terms like enthalpy. Kasi power talaga, ibig sabihin kapag naka per hour or naka per time basis siya. Anyway, uh, our working equation is this, right? Yung Q is equal to 
delta H reaction. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, whatever delta H, whatever enthalpy of reaction na nakukumpute natin, yun na rin yung Q or heat evolve. So, therefore, Q equals delta H. Okay, so therefore, Q is minus 1.392 times 10 raised to 4 kilojoule per hour. And this is our final answer. Ang ibig sabihin ng negative, or rather, ang, ang, ang ating sagot dito is, okay, Okay, so let me correct something lang doon sa ating working equation. Uh, Q should be negative of the enthalpy of reaction. Alright? Rearranging the above equation. So Q equals minus delta H reaction pala. So therefore, ang ating gagayahin dito is that Q is negative delta H reaction. So, ang final answer natin is positive that. Okay? So positive yan. Ngayon, let's interpret that positive sign. So, ang ibig sabihin ng positive sign na yan, according to our sign convention, so, Q is positive, it indicates that heat must be removed from the system. Heat must be removed because of the positive sign. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, yan na rin yung cooling requirement. Now, yung unit na kilojoule okay, per hour, you can actually change that to kilo uh, watts, no? I'm sorry, no. It's times, if you multiply this by the conversion na uh, ang um, one hour ay 3,600 seconds, okay, magiging kilojoule per second siya, which is the same as kilowatt. So, you can answer it. You can answer the question in that way. Pwede siya maging kilowatt. But anyway, ito yung ating final answer.